right near your office you've got this little room which is just a small uh, video conferencing unit um, just a camera and screen um, a microphone and speakers whereas um, up the hill about as you say five minutes walk away you've got the high definition uh, studio uh, which do you tend to use um, it depends which one's free really right. um, but this one because it's only two seconds from my convenient. office and I can nip back to the office if I you know if I've forgotten something I can say oh I'll be back with you in a minute and, and nip down yeah. I have had some issues with um, conferences where some people have been in high definition and others haven't it you can see the difference and we've had a few problems with that but mm. um, I like this room because it's quite small it's easy to get the camera you know it mm. feels more like less like you're sitting in a big barn and mm. you know people know that you're rattling around so yeah this one's quite a nice so do you nice think thing. convenience of use is, is an issue here? yeah I think so um, for me definitely mm. A, mm. you know a close convenient one and, and certainly um, with the new options for desktop conferencing I'd be quite interested in that because we do we do use it quite a bit one thing that has really helped um, and I know you put this in place was actually being able to check the venue availability mm. in advance mm -hmm. um, and I you know if you're trying to organize a big conference if I'm trying to organize eight or nine different sites you know trying to get everyone's dates and then the rooms and it has really been helped by the Available system, mm. you know. Do you find that uh, another group that I was speaking to recently said about the practicalities? How are we going to know when the studios are all available all across Wales? Do you find those practicals an issue? That, uh, yeah, it, you know, a challenge it can take, and that's why I try and leave about a month from you know a month's organising time. Mm. Actually, not only pinning the people there. Mm. You know, who's going to be available, when's everyone available? I mean, that's a nightmare enough as it is. Mm. Then add on to the booking facilities, and for some places, the room is also bookable for other things. Mm. So, you know, factoring that in as well mm. um, can be quite difficult. It does take up a lot of time in terms of thinking about it and just keeping lists of who's where. And mm. that kind of thing. It's a bit of a barrier then to use, really. If everybody had the dedicated little room next door to their office. <laughs> oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe this is where the desktop stuff will come in. You know, if you've just got two or three people at each side, you've got one place where they're going to book a studio and everyone else desktops. Maybe, you know, maybe mm. that's the future for these sort of smaller meetings. Um, but we're back to the issue then. It, it, you're going to get people walking into the office and the fun going off and all true, that kind yeah. of thing. So yeah. unless you've got a dedicated space... You know, you're, you're, you're yeah. still, in actual fact, uh, you know, when you're talking about the streaming event, that's true. Yeah. to me that from yeah. home might be the, the best that's to that's do that. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that I should add that we've also found useful is the ability to add a video conference into a physical meeting. So we had a physical meeting down in Swansea recently, but we booked a room that had video conferencing facilities, so a couple of sites couldn't make it. So most of us were there, and they were remote. That has its own challenges for chairing to make sure that they get involved as much as the people who are around the table. But that that's been quite useful when you know seven out of the eight sites can get together, but one of them isn't able to make the you know the long journey. Particularly if it's a meeting in the south of Wales and maybe Wrexham or Bangor can't make it because of just the sheer travelling time. Mm. You know that that's really helped too. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I've, I've been in meetings like that where I've been the person video conferenced in. It's quite easy to feel detached, though. Yeah, and another yeah. issue has been commented to me on a situation like that is that in the room where the majority of the people are physically together, they tend to address the video conferencing box as if, or oh, they're all focused on that as if they're watching TV, and then they less Focus interact each yeah. other amongst each other. So it is. It is it's quite challenging, it's as you say. It's useful, challenges. I found it particularly challenging as I didn't have my glasses off at the time. <laughs> and I couldn't see anything, so that made it kind of doubly difficult. <laughs> screen, but um, yeah, I mean, it, it's useful for those people who, you know, particularly with the distances between, say, Bangor mm. and, and Cardiff. You know, it is it is a long way for, mm. you know, an hour, three quarters of an hour um, mm. conversation. So you know, that's been quite. What the group that I'm uh, talking to at the moment, they're distributed around Wales, but they're thinking of starting off by having, say, three sites. So they still have their mini 
get-togethers, yeah. uh, sandwiches, tea, and so on, and a bit of yeah, social yeah, networking, yeah. if you like. But they don't fly from yeah. Anglesey to Cardiff or drive for a day. Yeah. So have so you been in meetings where that's take, that, that no, kind of sets up a good idea. That might be It's a kind of compromise between all or nothing. Hmm. Um, so we'll yeah, see that's how that definitely goes. Something, definitely something to think about. I'll yeah. keep you posted on that yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, thanks very much. That's really good. And uh, yeah, good luck with your video conferencing. Thank you. <laughs>